We've talked a lot about the benefits of puck prep, and in particular, puck screens. These unassuming little metal pog slammers are alleged to deliver great benefits when it comes to even flow and extraction. Recently, I forced myself to use them for a week, and I certainly noticed some improvements despite being slightly skeptical at first. For all intents and purposes, I was converted. I accepted the part utilitarian, part neurotic worship of the little metal disc into my heart. I did have a little question in the back of my head, though. How much exactly can a puck screen affect extraction? Thankfully, here at Clive, we have all the tools to find out, so I put together a little experiment. This is one of the simpler experiments we've carried out here. I dialed in our trusty kickstep blend for a classic one to two shot using the Linea Mini and our own Luca Adam. The target recipe was 20 grams in with 40 grams out in 30 seconds. Truly bog standard. I pulled a handful of shots and then measured TDS and calculated extraction for each. Then I pulled another set of shots with the only change being the addition of our Luca puck screen. I prepped every one of these shots with a Weber Moonraker and really nice tamper. So if you have any concerns whatsoever about consistency, please contact Douglas Weber directly at his home address of 4305. So what did the data show? Well, somewhat reassuringly, if unsurprisingly, it very clearly showed an increase in extraction among the shots pulled using the puck screen. What surprised me is just how much of an increase we saw. The average extraction percentage of the shots pulled with the puck screen in this test was a full 3% higher than the shots pulled without. That's roughly a 20% increase in extraction percentage. Great example of relative versus absolute measurements there, not confusing at all. Plus, the data is impressively consistent. You'll also notice that the extraction percentage of the shots pulled with the puck screen is considerably more consistent than the shots pulled without, which is the benefit of puck screens that we most often talk about. So we all love a good graph and that's some pleasing data, but why is it impressive and what exactly does it mean? Well, my surprise at the jump in extraction is largely due to the fact that puck screens don't seem to do all that much. The puck screen is only really creating a few notable changes here. It's improving the dispersion of water into the puck, it's keeping the top of the puck flat, and it's also reducing the headspace between the top of the puck and the shower screen. While I have previously noted the virtues of these minor perks, I would have significantly underestimated their impact on extraction if you had me guess before this experiment. When you consider that the shots pulled without the puck screen only varied in extraction by about 1%, despite their unavoidable random differences in distribution, swinging the numbers by that much without impacting the recipe is sort of wild. Now, the impact of this is bound to change a little bit when using different grinders, coffees, etc., but in my experience, when I've chosen to test it, I've almost always seen extraction percentage increase when using a puck screen. That may be more frequent than I'd like to admit, but the key takeaway for me here is that I haven't been showing puck screens enough respect. The minor inconvenience of tossing in and then removing that little slammer is pretty insignificant when you consider those sweet, sweet extraction gains. Do you use puck screens? Has anyone ever called you a nerd or neurotic because of it? Was that person me? Well, I'm here to tell you that that person was wrong, and whatever happened in the past, we're all here appreciating puck screens now. For more Espresso Experiments, tip subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.